Let's evaluate the limit of this sum. First, we want to relate this to the definition of the integral. So if you have the integral from a to b of f of x dx, that's the same thing as a limit as n approaches infinity, the sum from i equals 1 to n of delta x times f of x i star, where delta x is equal to b minus a over n, and x i star is some point in, in the interval a to b. In our case, we just want to match up what delta x is and what f of x i star is. So delta x here is going to be b minus a over n. Now, in our case, delta x is 1 over n. So we know that b minus a has to be 1, which b minus a represents the length of the interval, and that is 1. And so f of x i star will just be whatever is inside the parentheses, the negative 1 plus i over n. And here x i star is going to be i over n. So f of x i star being negative 1 plus x i star means that f of x is negative 1 plus x. Okay, so we know that f of x is negative 1 plus x and the length of the interval is 1. Now let's look at this. Um, let's put it all together. We can rewrite by the definition of integral this sum as integral from 0 to 1 of negative 1 plus x dx. And if we let u equal negative 1 plus x, we can rewrite this integral. And we would change the limits. When x is 0, we would have negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1 for u. And when x is 1, u will be negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. And we know that these two uh, integrals here are equivalent since if you make another substitution, if you let x equal u, you get the same integral. Okay, so this is, um, now let's actually solve it. So we have the 1 over n over here does not depend on i. So we can pull it out, think of it kind of like a constant. And now we're going to break this negative 1 plus i over n into two different sums. The first one here, we're just adding negative 1 n times, so that would just be negative n. And we can pull out a factor of 1 over n since it does not depend on i. Now the sum of i here, that's basically adding up the first n numbers. So that's just n times n plus 1 over 2. Now we can distribute the 1 over n. So we have 1 over n times negative n. That's the negative 1. And the top we have n times n plus 1. So we'll multiply the bottom by n times n times 2 to get 2n squared. We'll distribute out the n to both the n and the 1. And then we'll divide everything by n squared. And so when n approaches infinity, we get negative 1 half is our limit. Okay, so n, that is also equivalent to the integral that we found.